guys. Very nice to be here. Tudo bem, pessoal? Uh, I'm Pedro. I'm the CEO of uh, Acceleratech, which is a accelerator based here in São Paulo. And I'm also the president of uh, Abrai, which is the, the association of the Brazilian accelerators. So I'm very curious to talk to these guys and uh, know what they're doing and uh, learn a lot too. So uh, I'd like to, to begin just asking uh, for each one of you to introduce yourselves and tell a, bit, uh, a little bit about what you do, uh, about your accelerators and uh, the program. And uh, so we can start the questions. Is it okay? Yeah? So if you can start. All right. All right. All right. All right so I'm uh, Jason Delarocca from uh, Execution Labs, uh, one of the co-founders. Uh, we are based in Canada, but we do uh, investments and deals with teams from all over the world. Uh, we are a bit of a hybrid program. We have both an accelerator, which is a three-month program where we provide seed funding and then coaching and mentorship and uh, networking opportunities, business, business development opportunities uh, for the teams we work with. And we also have a finishing fund, which is a bit of a different program, which provides funding and also coaching, etc., to close a project. Accelerator is there to get a project started, and accelerate it, whereas the finishing fund is to, is to get it onto the market and ship it and uh, finalize it. Uh, and we've been operating for about two and a half years, have done, uh, I think, 20 teams or so. We have a, another batch of teams starting uh, next week, uh, and lots of uh, interesting lessons uh, learned in trying to uh, make uh, our work with developers to be more entrepreneurial. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Vitor Andrade, I'm the CEO of Star Brazil. Star Brazil is a government program, it's an initiative of the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. And we do uh, accelerate startups from software, hardware and IT services, including games as well. We have probably, I think, eight startups, game startups in our portfolio. We do that in partnership with accelerators in Brazil. So we have now 17 different accelerators that are based in seven different states of Brazil. Acceleratex is one of them, Wire and so on. We have those accelerators since 2013, the first batch. We have now in our portfolio 183 startups from Brazil and, uh, and from abroad. We have 21 startups that, from, that came from uh, 13 different countries. So we are accelerating them since 2013. We have some results. Some of them, uh, we have two, two startups that were sold for other big companies. Some of them receiving funding from big investors in Brazil and abroad. So um, I'm here to, to talk a little bit about what we are doing here in Brazil with the accelerators. My name is Andrew Walker. I'm the COO of Game Founders, a uh, global game accelerator. Uh, we've been operating since 2012. Uh, we've run four programs, uh, all three months long. We were originally based in Estonia uh, in Europe, where we ran a two-year fund, ran four programs there, uh, with 28 teams coming through those programs uh, from 16 different countries. We have now opened up our Asia fund, which will be based in Malaysia, and we've, uh, we're, applications are technically still open because I haven't actually closed them yet, but the deadline has just passed. So um, uh, we are going to have another program this year with another 10 teams uh, uh, based out of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, I'm soon off to uh, make sure we have offices there. And uh, we hope to have great, 10 great teams from more countries starting in September through to November. Great. Uh, so, I want to ask Jason just uh, to start. Well, uh, when we look uh, at a startup, a digital startup, we look at their business model, we look how they make, how will they make money, if they're making any, any kind of money right now, and uh, about their future gains. So, when you look at a gaming company, so, uh, so how do you evaluate? Uh, it's, uh, it's basically, the, the team, the, the, what they did before, so what's your, your take on that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of all of the above. And, and, and please, wh where is the value, if you can uh, stress, the, off of a, a gaming company? Uh, where do you see the value, exactly? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting question. I mean, we're, 
I mean, we're first and foremost from the game industry. Uh, so unlike traditional investors or traditional VCs, we'll be looking at your business model and the key metrics, all this kind of stuff is very numbers driven. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking first and foremost at the team. Uh, we really like to believe in the company and the vision of the studio and the team, uh, more so than any single project. Of course, we have to get excited about the game, we have to think the game has potential, but really, uh, we take a long-term perspective. So, uh, you know, you're entering in a relationship with us, we're going to become uh, co-owners of your company, we're going to take shares in the company, which puts us on the same side as each team in terms of driving for success. Uh, and we want to be able to look you in the eye and believe that in five years' time, you'll be doing really exceptional blockbuster work. And the game you're working on right now is one step in that direction. We don't expect that the game you're working on right now is going to turn us all into millionaires. Uh, it's a bit unrealistic. But we have to believe that you have the, the, the right attitude, the, the, the right uh, skill set to get to that future point where in that future stage you are making Millions. So it's a much more um, uh, soft evaluation uh, where, where it's evaluating the team, the potential for the game, we're looking at it vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the market. But we come in early, so usually though companies are not making lots of revenue, they don't really have extensive metrics to look at, maybe a little bit, uh, and usually the track record, uh, maybe they've shipped a few games, but, but oftentimes it's the first time that that team is coming together to make uh, an initial an initial game. Um, so, I mean, it, I, I find a lot of investors who invest in the game space that come in much later, where success is already known, and they're just sort of funding for more success. Whereas a lot of the accelerators are coming in early, and you know we have to believe you have that potential to be something great, but it is a risk, it is a gamble that we're coming in on. But because we are game focused, we think that we're going to give the teams an unfair advantage to succeed over any you know random uh, game company. Also, the value add that we provide, uh, or a program like Game Founders, that you know we are game industry veterans, uh, and having that optimized program, I think, makes a big difference uh, for for game studios. Victor, let, let me ask you. Uh, I've been in Startup Brazil since the beginning, and uh, I've seen some 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 examples of game companies. Could you share with us some, some cool uh, game companies that you, that you know? Yes, of course. Uh, we have now in our portfolio eight startups that use games as a way to, to solve problems. Not necessarily making money uh, selling really the game, but... Uh, yeah. Normally they, they work to, to use games for educational purpose. This is the, the most common in our portfolio. Not so common because we have just, just eight. I can share, I think that's a, an interesting company in Recife. Uh, she, they, they're being accelerated by Caesar, uh, and it's an accelerator there that's an innovation institute in Brazil. They, they call Bidal. They interesting because they, we have four players that are fighting for a crown in the, in the game. You have to pay, I think, I don't know, so one and a half hour, you have to pay to to go into the battle, and if you take the crown, you have to stay with it for at least 10 seconds. If you do, you receive money, receive a, a award, a prize, and the other guys will have to pay again to fight against you and to win you. So it's very addictive, the game. They're trying, they're in a prototype phase right now, but everybody that's playing the game is very addictive to that. So it's very interesting because it's not a, it's not a usual uh, business model in Brazil. Normally they work for education purposes and more B2B than B2C. In this case, there are B2C startup that are using a different model to, to model of revenue. So it's an interesting case. And we are looking to receive more startups from gaming in, the, in our next batches. We are, we are hope to, to receive more startups that use different models to solve problems in different sectors as training people for retail, to sell, so we are looking for all this kind of startups as well. Very cool. Uh, so, Andrew, you just, you just spoke about your, your new uh, office in Asia. Uh, it's probably in the, right in the center of uh, everything that's going on with, uh, uh, with the Asian gaming scene. So, uh, could, 
us in Brazil. So how, how could we relate to that uh, and, and how does it differ from everything that you're already doing uh, uh, from 2012? Well, it's really essentially, so I'll start with that. It's really essentially the same kind of program that we started in Tallinn in 2012, transplanted to Kuala Lumpur. Um, one of the reasons, it's so one of the reasons why it's so exciting though is that Southeast Asia, com countries like Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, that region is going to double in revenue over the next two to three years, according to many reports. Now, that's, the area is not without challenges, but it's very exciting to be in a, an, inside a market that is dynamic and, and, and has so much potential. So, for any studio from any country to get hands-on experience of the marketplace, uh, to go there, experience it firsthand, um, it will, will, can only be of value to them. Um, you know, it, what we did, maybe the bigger, this biggest difference is that you know, Tallinn, Estonia itself, Estonia is not exactly a big market, but it was close to Finland where there's an awful lot of uh, you know, exciting things still going on. But in, in, uh, so we still will have the same program of mentoring, our pitch practice, uh, demo days, we'll be going to you know, interesting international events. Um, we want to make, to make sure everybody that comes through the program is ready to, uh, to talk to investors, to talk to publishers if that's what they want to do. Um, and we really want to, you know, our, our program has always been about the business of making games. It's always been about, we know, we've taken studios that we believe already know how to ship games. In fact, we prefer that. They have a, a track record. Um, and that it's the same model, except it's in Kuala Lumpur. Why is it relevant for Brazilian developers? Because it's a huge marketplace that's accessible to, to them. It's a global marketplace and we want to work with people that think globally rather than just think regionally or locally. Um, and this is a way for them to get direct experience. Um, you know, we'll have mentors coming in from worldwide. We, we'll still, we have a mentor network that is deep and wide across the world that, and they'll get to meet 60 of them during, during, the, uh, during the three months. So, um, you know, I think we've already had one Brazilian team come through the program. Oh, really cool. Oh yeah. If there's anyone here from Bitcake, stick your hand up. There. Oh, oh. Well, I'm going to kick their asses later. So, um, it's... <laughs> It's uh, they can, they've been, they're out there with the project till, and they're doing very well. And, and I think that uh, they actually stayed two months longer. They felt they liked Talon so much they stayed for a little, a little bit longer. So um, and I've seen I I'm pretty confident that we'll see Brazilian studios and game founders again for the next program and and, and the programs to come. Do you have uh, applications open right now? Yes, I mean this is actually my final event. I mean I do. Uh, we have an online application, but I also do uh, uh, personal scouting of, of developers. I like to meet developers as much face to face to do due diligence. Um, so this is the final event. Brazil gets that advantage. Awesome. Uh, so uh, Jason, just uh, when we when we talk about an accelerator like like us, for instance, we have mentors, we have a program, uh, we have the funding. Uh, and I think you probably have those same things, but uh, so, but what are the areas you fo you focus when you're accelerating a game company? Uh, how uh, wh what are the differences? Yeah, so so everything we do is is games. Uh, we are all game industry veterans. Uh, every team in the program that we invest in is a game studio, and they're making games, not game tech, game service, game related. It's we're making games. Um, so everyone in the building is, uh, you know, has expertise and connections that are all super relevant and focused on games. Uh, when teams come in, we have a big strategic meeting to understand really what, where are we accelerating them to. Every, every team, every project is at a different stage, they're working on different objectives, they have different strategic priorities, and so we essentially customize your experience depending on what it is you're trying to achieve. That depends 
on the scale of game you're building, it depends on the platform you're deploying to, depends on your business model uh, and how much experience you have. So, so, so the, the, the program is quite uh, optimized or customized in that sense. Uh, it, the, the, it lasts how, how long, the program? Uh, three, months. three months. So so for the accelerator, we require teams to come to Montreal for three months. Um, some of them do stay a little bit longer, but essentially you go back home uh, afterwards. Uh, but, you know, to a certain extent we're getting married. I mean, we become co-owners of, of your company and we want you to succeed long term, as I was describing before. So. Even though there is a three-month program where it's super intense and you're in the studio and there's mentors and publishers visiting and press and you know all kinds of stuff happening very intensely in those three months, it's not like you know you get divorced when you leave the building. Uh, we still do a tremendous amount of work and follow-up and guidance and support uh, long-term for our alumni. Uh, I mean, uh, we went to GDC with a bunch of teams. Uh, and teams who had graduated in the first, you know, two years ago, we were still doing publisher introductions and investor introductions. So they had a, you know, a full schedule of meetings at, at GDC. So once you're part of the family, you know, we continue to, to love you and provide that support and guidance and open doors uh, where necessary, even though, you know, the three months were particularly uh, intense. Uh, but really, it's, it's, it's customized. It really is. Um, dependent on the needs of the studios. If we have more teams doing free-to-play work, we're bringing mentors on monetization. In general, we tend to focus more so on the business aspects. Business, marketing, scheduling, funding, um, negotiating contracts with publishers, because most developers are talented developers and fewer developers are, are skilled entrepreneurs or skilled business people. Uh, and so we tend to find the developers that are amazingly talented, creating super cool games, but you know are a bit lacking in those skills. So a lot of our effort is more geared towards the business side of things. All, that being said, though, we do help on sort of uh, refining your scope and helping you define better define your vision and how you articulate what's special about your game, this kind of stuff. And uh, is your application open uh, right now? Well, the, the, the next cohort starts on Monday, so I think it might be difficult yeah. for the team yeah. from Brazil to get to Canada in uh, three days. But um, it, it's, uh, we're, we're flexible. We do run two batches uh, officially a year, but there is some, some wiggle room to kind of slip in uh, in between. So, uh, I mean, I, like Andrew, I've been here scouting for teams, meeting developers uh, in the hopes of finding a uh, a really talented studio to, 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 to get involved with. Okay, so if one of those guys want to, want to pitch you, uh, today's the day, right? Well, and, and tomorrow. And tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, I, as part of BIG, they have a matchmaking system, so we've been busy with meetings. Let's, let's leverage your, your presence here, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so yeah. So, Vitor. Uh, Startup Brazil will open soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the application, right? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> really soon. So, uh, people that want to apply to start at Brazil, uh, which are the accelerators in Brazil that uh, usually accept or accelerate gaming companies? This is interesting uh, because we don't have an accelerator in Brazil that's focused on games like you guys, but most of them can accept and some of them already accepted some gaming companies. We have now uh, probably, we have eight startups from five accelerators. So I can, I can say that the names of those that already have one gaming company. Wall, that's in Porto Alegre. So Porto Alegre. Uh, Caesar from Recife. Baita from Campinas. Uh, Pipa, that's from Rio and they, they have uh, an office in Sao Paulo. Okay. And all sorts of Brazil from, from Rio, they already accepted gaming companies uh, in their portfolios. So if you have, a, but if you are a game company, you can look for other accelerators because most of them are not afraid to receive this kind of of startup. So you can ap really apply to talk with them because they can be interested in your project. So I recommend you to look for all the accelerators, to know more about them, and see if they already have some gaming companies, or if they have mentors that have experience on that. On, on that note, uh, could you talk a little bit about the Startup Brazil program and give some tips about the guy, about how to apply and, and, and 
uh, how to increase the chances? Yes, the program is for companies that are already incorporated in Brazil, if you are a Brazilian company. So you have to have a Brazilian company up to four years old. So we have, we're working with very early stage uh, startups. Most of the startups that were selected by us, they have at least a prototype that are being tested or being used by someone. That's not only a, an idea. We have most of them from a prototype to a product with early revenues. So if you have a prototype being tested, I think so you, you can apply for the program. Uh, some that's important is how to sell this project for, for us, because as a game company, you will fight with other startups that are working in education, health, they are from software, hardware based. So you have to sell a project when you're competing against other startups that are not only game companies. I think it's a tip that I can, can give you that you have to show how your project can be better to invest because we, we invest now grants for the government, 200,000 reais for the government and the accelerator also invest in the company. So we have to sell to pitch your project as a good investment option for, for accelerated that will choose you among other projects that are so different from you. From you. Should they wait for the for the application to open to start talking to the accelerators? No, I think if you are looking for a partner, an accelerator is a partner of yours. You have to talk to them and to know them better because that's not only very common to they start to. The accelerator do that part, to talk to the stars, to, to know if it's a good fit with them, but the start normally they don't do that. So it's important to you to talk. Pedro is one of the accelerators. If you want to go to an accelerator in Brazil, you can talk with Pedro. These guys, they have accelerators abroad. So if you want to, to have an, a partner as them, you have to pitch them. The first part is to pitch them. Yeah. I think Jason wants to. Yeah. I mean, just to add that, um, I mean, we're talking, as the accelerators, you know, we're the ones with the money, we're the ones evaluating teams to bring them in, but I think it's important to realize that as the developers, I mean, you're, you're actually the ones with the power. It may not seem like that sometimes, but, you know, we're desperate to find the good teams to work with. And so, um, it's important that if you do look at these kinds of options, and the same is true if you're going to look at publishers, if you're going to look at investors or accelerators, you know, you need to think about how that partner is going to help you. But it's okay to be greedy and selfish and be thinking about you're building your company and building your team and who out there in the world is going to help you achieve your goals. Uh, and so it's important to, on your side, evaluate the options and, and the opportunities and understand your own company, your own business and what you need help with and where your gaps are and then can this program or that program or this investor or that publisher or partner can they actually fill those gaps and help you to achieve the goals? We, we, we see it where it's sort of the reverse, where people just, oh, I think I, I've been told I better go get some investors, or I better go, and they go, and they, they just sort of fall down this path, and they don't, they don't think critically about, well, wait a second, what is it that I actually need, and can those opportunities or partners actually help me? So, so be critical on, on your side. Just adding this, it's very interesting because when the startup are building their team, they normally try to find co-founders that can be complementary to them, but they don't see an accelerator that way. So they see an investor, and normally the accelerator, they enter in a very early stage. So it's almost like a co-founder, so you have to find competencies that you don't have, because the accelerator will, will help you with that. Yeah, ju just to, sh to share an experience here, uh, this batch, this new batch that we're open right now, will we'll pre-select a group of uh, more teams then, then we would accelerate and then we'll have a, a whole month uh, without any contracts so the team can feel if they have, uh, if we are right fit for them and uh, if, if so then we'll discuss contract. So first we'll show the value and then uh, the contract. Uh, so on that note I, I want to uh, ask Andrew uh, because gaming the gaming business is a very global business, right? So uh, once you're in the gaming business, you're you're competing with everyone, right? Depending on the platform or or, or the marketplace you're in. But uh, 
essentially it's a global uh, business. So since you take teams from all over the world, um, what are the challenges to tackle this challenge, to, to, to simply deal with uh, customers from all over, uh, with languages, with cultures? Uh, so how, would you, how do you approach the global business? Well, I mean, it, it, when it comes to talking to developers, I mean, we take developers from all over the world, and the only requirement that we make is that you're able to speak English, because they make the, the, our program is in English. Um, we can't make accommodations for those who, unfortunately, you know, we just can't have translators. So that's really, you know, the only requirement that we make to, that has a sort of global impact. Uh, but dealing with developers from all over the world actually um, is one of the joys of working with game founders because it, it's I've always had a great passion for finding uh, studios from different parts of the world. So we've had applications from 67 different countries. So we've had uh, you know quite a wide reach. We've taking teams from 16 different countries and in this coming program I'm sure that number will go up. Um, I don't really see uh, net, net problems, I mean I think there are uh, certain uh, territories that are less likely to to apply to an accelerator like Game Founders, um, maybe because they feel they have other options, uh, more direct investment options. And I think where Game Founders fits in quite nicely is in emerging markets where we are taking raw talent and helping to build the ecosystem out in, in that market. So we're not just in Malaysia to invest in studios from the world over, but we're also helping to build out, we're working with all the game development associations across what they call ASEAN, which is kind of a, a, a term for Southeast Asia, um, uh, it's kind of like an economic term. So we've uh, we've been asked to be involved in, in, in helping build out better talent uh, development uh, solutions, work with universities. Um, so when the really, mentors come, really getting involved in the eco local ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, so when mentors come over, we're actually going to make sure that they get offered up to to go to universities and other and other game associations to get a chance to get them to talk. So the impact will not just be for our program, but will be. You know, shared amongst everybody as much as possible to take, so that it's a great bang for the buck for us to be there. But you know, we I, I just get a kick just getting uh, you know working with developers all the world over. Last the last uh, batch we had, we had developers from Georgia, China, the Ukraine, Brazil, oh god, Estonia. Um, I think that's it. I'm probably I'm forgetting somebody. But it, it's, it makes for a great mix. It's actually because they're bringing their own life experiences in, and, and because they are uh, uh, become uh, from vastly different backgrounds, they can share this with other people. And there was a developer from Argentina as well. So their different skills and their different life experiences actually add to the program. There's no, I don't see a, a challenge or a problem in taking people from all over from the world. Diversity creates, uh, leverages innovation, right? Yes, I think so. I think it, it, gives, it gives everybody just a little bit more, uh, it widens everybody's horizons. Cool. Now, Jason, let's talk about finance, uh, financing uh, for a bit. Uh, so you, you, I know you have uh, uh, experience uh, helping companies with, uh, with Kickstarter uh, projects. Uh, which I think are a great source of finance uh, all over. So I don't know if our, our developers, our game developers here in Brazil are using this, uh, this new channels to, 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 to drive their, their finance efforts. So could you, could you tell us a little bit about what, what you're seeing in terms of uh, using crowdfunding? To, to finance your uh, your your games or your your company well, and uh, tips regarding yeah I mean well uh, I mean the Kickstarter would be a whole other work day long workshop um, to to dig into has anyone actually done a Kickstarter or a Patreon or a Indiegogo so a few a few folks have and I think there's been some failed ones from Brazil as well uh, I mean we we use it as one of the potential financing tools. Uh, I mean, depending what country your studio is based out of, there is uh, different government grants, there's obviously angel investors and VCs, uh, there's publishers themselves as a good source for, for deals, and then Kickstarter. 
Uh, we don't do Kickstarter with all of the teams. Uh, generally speaking, if you're doing a free-to-play or freemium game, Kickstarter is not a good idea. Uh, and then if you're doing a premium game, you really have to have something unique or different that speaks to a very particular audience in order to drive that, uh, that uh, momentum and community around the game. So, interestingly enough, uh, doing a Kickstarter campaign, you have to start with many months of community building and marketing beforehand. Which is one of the biggest mistakes that developers make, is they assume that they'll start building their community and make noise about what they're doing when the Kickstarter starts, and that's a recipe for for disaster, um, you know we we invest uh, the seed investment is only fifty thousand dollars. I mean, most accelerators a very modest amount. Um, so our, our initial investment is fifty thousand, which is not enough to make a really good game, big game. So most of the projects that we invest in, most of the teams we invest in, the projects are half a million, a million, two million dollar projects in scope. And so every team that we take on we're making a promise to that team that we're going to work with them on the financing. Whether that means doing a Kickstarter campaign or, or chasing publishers or getting a deal with, a, with Sony or, or Microsoft as a you know, platform exclusive, etc. And that's part of the strategic work and support work that we do with them. I, actually, just as I was on the plane to Sao Paulo, one of our teams got a, a million dollars in funding and they were part of the E3 showcase of, uh, of Microsoft. Uh, and so this is this is what this is what we do. This is what we do. Kickstarter is just one tool under the right circumstances, but it's not the only thing that we we okay. use. Okay. And uh, Andrew, could you also comment on that, please, and see uh, and, and tell us if you're seeing any other uh, uh, patterns around the world that we can uh, uh, use? I think I think just to echo, I know what Jason is saying about Kickstarter is absolutely bang on. Um, you, you've got to build. What we actually, one of the things that we do to help, not just with Kickstarters or with, uh, with fundraising of any kind, is to really get developers to start thinking about their own brand and how they're, how they're um, you know, perceived in the marketplace so that the, the, the people you go out to speak to have a chance to have heard of you beforehand. Um, I mean, in terms of investment patterns, I'm, you know, if I want to speak very broadly, the money's moving east to west mostly now. I mean, there's a lot of money coming out of China. Um, a lot of money coming out of Japan, and um, you know we're seeing. But also, what is an interesting pattern that we, we you know, one of our developers um, who came out of our first program, you know, they've secured something like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of um, a sort of pre-series A style from one of a, a local investor. There's actually quite a lot of strategic local investors in, in territories. Um, uh, that, that have been investing lately, Italy, Portugal, in, in Europe, and, and also Southeast Asia. So it's, it's, it's a case of looking at the world in terms of the bigger players who will go wherever the big opportunities are. And they should also look locally. Also look to their local uh, student, local potential local VCs and local angel networks, because there's a, they're, they're sometimes more sympathetic in, uh, to, to help uh, look beyond maybe what their uh, normal investment patterns are and they'll maybe take a strategic investment in a games uh, developer because they're trying to help the whole ecosystem themselves. They, they've been there, right? They, they, they know what they're They know exactly, they've got, they know the pain of going through the whole, like, you, you, you go out, you try to make a game, you've got, you're, you're, you're lacking in a little bit of funding to, make this, to, to take it to the next level. I mean, that's where some other funds come in. But uh, what I'm saying is that there are angel networks that we've found that have come in and uh, you know, who, who know exactly what those entrepreneurs are going through and will put money in if they believe in the individuals. It's the same due diligence that we you know, put them through. Okay, uh, so uh, I think uh, we have uh, some time for questions, right? Yes? Hmm? Yes? One question there. Yes. So I have an idea. Uh, I have an idea. I really treat this idea, believe this idea, and I look at some of you and you are like, what the hell? Looking at your watch because you're in a hurry, you want to go home. But it's the time of my life to preach to you. So I have my business plan ready. I believe an idea. I have a pro prototype. How do I teach you in this 30 seconds, 20 minutes, 20 minutes? What do you want to listen or see? I'm, a, I'm sorry, I'm going to say something that's not going to please you. Ideas are worth nothing. 
you have a prototype. We didn't, I didn't hear that. You have a prototype. I mean, you have to show, one of the things that we do, one of our rules is we don't take one person team. So if you come to me with a team, you come to me with a team with a prototype, you show why you, if you show why you could execute on that prototype, maybe you haven't shipped the game before, but we have actually taken teams that haven't shipped whole products before and have done quite well. But if there is a way that you can prove to us that you can execute and execute to a high quality, then yeah, we'll, we'll absolutely consider you. There, I don't understand why you're, you would meet resistance. And I certainly don't look at my watch because I'm not wearing one. <laughs> not from time to that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think events like this are perfect for that. I mean, we, we've been meeting with teams, uh, I think I've done 15 studio meetings already where they come sit down and talk about uh, their company, the vision, the project, they show a demo. Um, so, uh, I mean, we're here, we're hanging out for the rest of the day. We're here tomorrow, so it shouldn't be a problem. Too. It's because uh, we listen and we re read a lot about, okay, do your business plan, be prepared, but okay, I have this all of stuffs, but how do I show you, what do I show you? Yeah, so you buy my I, usually, I, mean, I, don't, I don't have time to read a business plan. It's usually you're just pulling numbers from your butt anyway, so it's a waste of time. It's it's the team, it's the vision of the studio, it's it's the prototype, and then and then we talk about the, the rest. I, I mean I don't know, but you ever look at a business plan? I mean, what is a business plan? I, I, a business plan is like a war plan. It goes out of the window the first day, first day of battle. <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'm saying that from 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 my own experience uh, from being in startups. And uh, you know, it, it could, I just want to echo what Jason says. This is, we're here, we're being matched up with all kinds of developers uh, to talk to them, to, to get to know them. And, and also, you know, it's team, your vision, your ability to execute. And also, you know, is there a, uh, is there, is there a feeling like we can work together? Because if you're coming to an accelerator, whether it's Execution Labs or Game Founders, you know, we're going to be working quite closely together, so there has to be this feeling that we can communicate and, and each of us take criticism as well. So, you know, it's not about just your vision, but can you take criticism? Because if you're going to talk to an, a large number of mentors that would be in each of our program, you're going to get beat up and you're going to get beat up regularly. Thank okay, you. people, we have no, no more time for questions, unfortunately, but you can talk to them. Uh, right after the, the panel. And I would like to ask for a big round of applause to Andrew, Victor, and Jason. Thank you.